Welcome to a a news in depth. In depth. Where we uh we do a deep dive into the sources you shared with us. Right. And extract the most insightful nuggets of knowledge. I'm Liam. I'm Olivia, and think of this deep dive as a shortcut to being well informed. Okay. On online business opportunities in the digital age. Exactly. Based on the material you've sent us. That's right. And hopefully with just enough humor to keep you hooked. Right. Speaking of which, if you're looking to repurpose your content into different forms for maximum reach, check out DMPL services. You can find their link in the description below. Now let's get started with your deep dive. We've got a lot to unpack today. Okay, let's dive in. The sources you sent are really interesting. We're going to be focusing on insights from Cody, an entrepreneur who's built several successful online businesses. Yes, Cody's journey provides a fascinating case study for anyone looking to navigate the digital landscape and build a thriving business. From what I've gathered, his story really highlights the power of data-driven decisions, rapid experimentation, and a relentless focus on distribution. It seems his background in data analytics really shaped his entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. It's fascinating how he leveraged those skills to launch his first successful venture, Draft Horse AI. Draft Horse AI. I've heard that name floating around. What is it exactly? It's an AI powered tool. Okay. It was initially created for internal use within Cody's own business. However, it garnered so much attention online that he decided to launch it as a standalone product. And get this, it hit $10,000 in monthly recurring revenue, MRR in just 30 days. Hold on, MRR, you're gonna have to explain that one for me and our listeners. Of course. Yeah. MRR stands for monthly recurring revenue. Okay. It's basically the predictable and consistent revenue a business generates each month, often from subscriptions or ongoing services. It's a key metric used to measure the health and growth of a business, particularly in the online world. Got it, so Cody's tool took off like a rocket that's pretty impressive for something initially intended for internal use. Mm -hmm. What does this tell us about his approach to business? It seems Cody really believes in small bets and a bias towards action. Instead of spending months planning, he jumps in, tests ideas quickly, and sees what sticks. It's almost like throwing things at the wall, but in a very calculated, data-driven way. Interesting. So it's not just about launching anything. It's about quickly validating what the market actually wants, right? Exactly. Okay. This story also highlights the power of solving simple problems. Sometimes you don't need a groundbreaking idea, you just need to identify a pain point and offer a practical solution. And this is where his Chrome extension story comes in. Right, the one that brings in $8,000 to $9,000 per month passively. That's well, wild, making money while you sleep. That's the dream. What kind of problem does this extension solve? We don't know the specifics, but it underscores the fact that even simple solutions can be surprisingly profitable if you find the right niche and execute effectively. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Cody seems to emphasize speed, and action. He even uses this analogy of riding waves. What did he mean by that? He believes in identifying emerging trends and capitalizing on them quickly, much like a surfer catching a wave at the right moment. It's about spotting opportunities and acting decisively before the wave crashes. So always staying ahead of the curve, looking for the next big thing makes sense. But how does this translate into tangible business opportunities? Where should someone even begin if they want to build a successful online business like Cody's? Well, according to the sources you've shared, Cody is particularly bullish on two areas, AI-powered services and Chrome extensions. These are areas he's seen a lot of success in, and he's developed some specific strategies for leveraging them. Let's dig into those a bit first. AI-powered services. It seems like everyone's talking about AI these days. What's Cody's angle? He suggests focusing on services that solve specific problems for businesses, for instance. He provides the example of offering Google ad services tailored for niche businesses like automotive shops. That's smart. A lot of smaller businesses might not have the expertise or resources to manage their own online advertising. Yeah. Effectively, they'd be willing to pay for someone who knows the ropes. Exactly. He also recommends leveraging YouTube to solve the cold start problem uh -huh. by creating content that showcases your skills and expertise you can attract clients organically without spending a fortune on ads. So basically, using YouTube as a free marketing platform to build credibility and attract potential customers, that's a pretty cost-effective way to get started. Absolutely, and it ties back to his data-driven approach by analyzing what people are searching for on YouTube. Yeah. You can tailor your content to meet their needs and attract a targeted audience. Okay, I see how that works. Now, what about Chrome extensions? What makes them such a good business opportunity in Cody's opinion? He highlights their simplicity and profitability. Okay. They solve very specific problems, often with a smaller development scope than full-blown applications. He even points to a successful example called Email Extractor. Email extractor, what does it do? 
It simply allows you to extract email addresses from websites, which is incredibly useful for businesses doing outreach or lead generation. It sounds almost too simple, but I guess that's the point. If it solves a common problem, there's a market for it. And Cody emphasizes the importance of replicating proven business models instead of reinventing the wheel, find what works and adapt it to a new niche or target audience. That's a great point. It takes the pressure off needing to come up with a completely original idea. But how do you even find these proven models in the first place? That's where his data-driven market research approach comes in. Okay. He uses specific tools and techniques to identify problems people are actively searching solutions for. Okay, I'm curious about this. Can you walk us through his process? Let's take his hypothetical example of building a Chrome extension scraper. Okay. He starts by identifying a problem that people are actively seeking solutions to online. He uses tools like SEMrush to find keywords related to the problem, specifically looking for long tail keywords that indicate a high search intent. Long tail keywords meaning longer, more specific phrases that people search for, right? Mm. Precisely so. Instead of just searching data scraping, he might look for best Chrome extension for scraping email addresses from websites. That makes sense. It gives him a much clearer idea of what people actually want and whether there's a market for his potential extension. Exactly. And once he's validated the demand, he dives into the specifics of building the extension and more importantly, how to find potential customers. This is where his step-by-step -step cold email strategy comes into play. Cold email. I've heard of it, but I'm not sure I understand how it works. Is it still effective in today's world? Cody believes it is, if done correctly. He outlines a very specific process, starting with scraping Google Maps to identify businesses in his target niche. So let's say he's building that email scraper extension. What kind of businesses would he be targeting? Likely businesses that do a lot of outreach or lead generation marketing agencies, sales teams, recruiters, anyone who needs to build email lists. Okay, so he scrapes Google Maps to find these businesses. What does he do next? He uses tools like Hunter.io and Phantom Buster to extract email addresses from the websites of those businesses, but he doesn't stop there. Of course not. He's all about data validation. Yeah. So what does he do to make sure those emails are actually valid and active? He uses email verification tools like Zero Bounce to filter out any fake or inactive addresses. This is crucial to avoid getting flagged as spam and ruining your deliverability. Right. You don't want your emails ending up in the spam folder before they even have a chance to be seen. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So once he has a clean, verified list, he's ready to start sending those cold emails. Almost. He recommends using tools like Instantly.ai or SmartLead to automate the sending process and personalize the messages. Automation is key, especially when you're dealing with large email lists. But what about avoiding spam filters? Isn't that a big concern with cold email? It is. That's why he recommends setting up multiple domains and inboxes to send from it helps distribute the volume and reduces the risk of getting flagged. Okay, that's a smart strategy. Yeah. So you've got your verified email list, you're sending from multiple domains, you're using automation tools. Mm -hmm. What's the key to actually crafting an effective cold email message? Cody emphasizes the importance of specializing in a specific niche. Okay. By focusing on a particular type of business, you can develop a deep understanding of their needs and tailor your message accordingly. So it's all about speaking their language, understanding their pain points, mm -hmm. and demonstrating how your product or service can help them overcome those challenges. Exactly. And by specializing, you can also identify what Cody calls arbitrage opportunities within your client ecosystem. Arbitrage opportunities. Can you explain what he means by that? It's about finding ways to leverage your expertise and resources to create win-win situations for your clients, often by connecting them with each other or finding solutions that benefit multiple parties. Can you give an example? He uses the example of Suds Creative, an agency that focuses solely on car washes. By understanding the industry inside and out, they can offer services and solutions that are specifically tailored to their clients' needs and even connect car watch owners with other businesses that can help them grow. Okay, I see how that works. Mm -hmm. So by focusing on a niche, you gain a deeper understanding of the market and can identify opportunities that wouldn't be apparent to someone with a more general approach. Precisely. And this specialization combined with his data-driven approach and rapid execution seems to be a big part of what drives Cody's success. This is all really insightful. We've covered a lot of ground already from AI-powered services to Chrome extensions and cold email strategies. We have, but there's still more to explore next. We'll dive into how Cody scales his businesses beyond that initial $10,000 MRR mark and delve into his thoughts on upcoming business opportunities and trends. So we've seen how Cody approaches starting and validating a business idea, but what happens once you've hit that initial $10,000 MRR milestone? How do you go from a decent income to something truly scalable? 
That's a great question and one that a lot of entrepreneurs grapple with, according to your sources. Cody emphasizes the importance of really understanding your client's problems, and he believes the best way to do that is to get closer to them. Makes a lot of sense. You can gather all the data in the world, but sometimes there's no substitute for direct interaction. Exactly. It's not enough to just analyze data from afar. You need to engage with your clients, have conversations, and truly grasp their day-to-day -day challenges. He uses his experience at Rupa Health as an example. They discovered the importance of content marketing to reach their target audience. Okay. So they launched a podcast and live class series. So creating valuable content as a way to connect with potential customers and establish themselves as experts, that's a pretty common strategy these days, isn't it? It is, but what's interesting is how they took it a step further. They realized they could repurpose that long form content into smaller bite-sized pieces for distribution across different platforms. Okay, so instead of just having a podcast episode, they can turn it into a blog post, yeah. social media snippets, maybe even shorter videos. Precisely, it's a fantastic way to maximize the value of your content and reach a wider audience, especially for people who may not have the time or inclination to listen to an hour long podcast. It's like squeezing every drop of juice out of that content fruit. Exactly. And Cody suggests this content repurposing strategy can be applied to any business. Think about webinars, for instance. You can turn a single webinar into ebooks, white papers, blog posts, social media updates, and so much more. It's a great point. It seems like a lot of business owners are already doing webinars, so why not make the most of that content by repurposing it? Exactly. It's all about working smarter, not harder, as the saying goes. Now, you mentioned newsletters for founders. That seems to be another area that Cody is particularly excited about. What's the appeal there? It's a brilliant niche. Founders are always looking for ways to build their personal brand and share their expertise. Right. That makes sense. Personal branding seems to be more important than ever in the online world. It is. People want to connect with individuals, not just faceless companies. So how does Cody approach creating these newsletters for founders? His method is simple but effective. He suggests interviewing founders and turning those interviews into newsletters that can be distributed to their target audience. That's a win-win. The founder gets valuable content to share with their followers, and the newsletter creator gets paid for their services. Yeah. Plus, it plays into that whole trend of personal brand building we were just talking about. Exactly. It's a smart way to leverage both parties' strengths and create something valuable for the audience. Now, we've talked a lot about Cody's specific strategies and tactics, but I'm curious about his overall philosophy. What are some of the core principles that guide his approach to business? One of the things that really stands out from your sources is his emphasis on continuous experimentation and letting the market guide his decisions. He's not afraid to try new things and see what works. That's a key trait for any successful entrepreneur, right? The willingness to adapt and pivot based on what the market is telling you. Absolutely. And he has a fascinating perspective on the importance of distribution. What do you mean? He actually believes that distribution is more important than the product itself. Wow. That's a pretty bold statement. Most people would say it's all about having a great product. Right. But Cody argues that a great product with poor distribution might fail, while an okay product with excellent distribution can thrive. Okay, I see his point. It's like having a fantastic book that no one knows about, doesn't matter how good it is if no one's reading it. Exactly. He even uses Netscape as an example. They had a superior product, but Microsoft was able to outmaneuver them with their distribution strategy, ultimately winning the browser wars. So the lesson here is that you need to be as strategic about your distribution as you are about your product development. Precisely. It's not enough to just build something great. You need to get it in front of the right people, and that often requires a multifaceted approach. Now, we know Cody is always looking for the next big wave to ride. What are some of the trends he's currently excited about? Well, we've already touched on content repurposing, and he sees a huge opportunity there, especially for services that can automate the process using AI. That makes sense. AI is becoming more powerful and accessible every day. I can definitely see how it could streamline content creation and make it more efficient and affordable. Right. And he's also excited about the rise of multipreneurship, where individuals are starting and running multiple businesses simultaneously. I've definitely noticed that trend. It seems like people are less afraid to juggle multiple projects and pursue different passions. 
It's becoming easier than ever to launch new businesses thanks to the abundance of online tools and resources. And Cody sees a big opportunity in building tools and services for platforms with large user bases but limited applications. He specifically mentions QuickBooks apps, WordPress plugins, and the Zoom app store. What's the appeal of these platforms? These platforms have millions of users who are constantly looking for ways to extend the functionality of their existing tools. That's like the wild west of software development. Yeah. There's so much potential for innovation in these app ecosystems. Exactly, and Cody has a keen eye for identifying wealthy clients. He believes that businesses that cater to affluent customers are prime targets for his services. That's interesting. He even recommends focusing on specific zip codes with high concentrations of wealthy individuals. Right, and he highlights the importance of understanding that different economic levels tend to interact within their own circles. So if you want to reach affluent clients, you need to tailor your message and offerings to their specific needs and interests. You can't just use a one-size-fits-all approach. Exactly. He suggests focusing on service businesses with high-ticket prices, like digital marketing services for CrossFit gyms, for example. It's all about finding those niches where people are willing to spend money to solve their problems and where you can deliver real value. And while he's very data-driven, Cody's also a big advocate for learning from existing resources. He constantly references YouTube channels and online courses as sources of valuable information. It's a testament to the power of continuous learning and the accessibility of knowledge in the digital age. You don't need a fancy degree or years of experience to build a successful online business. You just need the willingness to learn and the drive to take action. Absolutely, and Cody's journey really embodies that spirit of resourcefulness and continuous learning. For speaking of learning, we've learned a lot about Cody's approach to starting scaling and adapting to the ever-changing digital landscape. We have, but there's still more to uncover next. We'll delve into some of Cody's more unconventional experiences and explore his insights on data analysis, storytelling, and the future of online business. It's fascinating to see how Cody blends data-driven decisions with that willingness to experiment and learn. He doesn't shy away from unconventional ventures, even if they don't always pan out as expected. You're referring to his experience building software for funeral homes. Exactly, that seemed like a pretty niche market to tackle. It was, and it highlights an important lesson the sources you shared indicate this venture presented some challenges for Cody, mainly due to his lack of deep domain knowledge in that particular industry. So even for someone as data savvy and action oriented as Cody, there's still value in sticking to areas where you have at least some existing knowledge or experience. Precisely, it's much harder to succeed in an industry you don't fully understand, even with the best tools and strategies. That makes sense. You need that foundational understanding to truly connect with customers and solve their specific problems. And this leads us to Cody's client method. Okay. It emphasizes the importance of understanding customer needs and meeting them where they are, which requires empathy and putting yourself in your customer's shoes. I'm intrigued. Can you elaborate on this method? He shared a story about working with a trailer company that was struggling to reach their target audience of farmers. Okay. Instead of relying on traditional marketing channels, Cody realized these farmers spent a lot of time at a particular gas station. So he went directly to where his customers were. That's pretty clever. Where did he set up a booth at the gas station? Even better, he created a localized magazine specifically for those farmers and distributed it at that gas station. What a creative approach and probably cost a lot less than a traditional advertising campaign. Mm -hmm. What kind of content did he put in this magazine? It featured stories about local farmers. Oh, okay. Creating a sense of community and making the content more relevant and engaging. He tailored it to their interests and habits, understanding that this particular group of farmers valued local news and stories about their peers. That's a great example of how understanding your customers' habits and preferences can inform your marketing strategy by going where your customers are and speaking their language, you can create a much stronger connection. Exactly. Now let's shift gears a bit and talk about Cody's approach to data analysis and storytelling. Okay. He's obviously very data-driven, but he also recognizes the importance of presenting that data in a compelling and persuasive way. Right, data is only useful if you can extract meaningful insights from it and communicate those insights effectively. He uses Supermetrics as an example. It's a tool that aggregates data from multiple sources into a single dashboard. 
So instead of having data scattered across different platforms, you can see everything in one place that sounds incredibly useful. It is. It makes it much easier to analyze trends, identify patterns, and draw meaningful conclusions. And he stresses the importance of what he calls data storytelling, right? Exactly. It's not enough to just present a bunch of numbers. You need to weave those numbers into a story that resonates with your audience. I think that's where a lot of people struggle. They get bogged down in the data itself and forget about the human element. It's about connecting the dots, highlighting the key insights, and presenting them in a way that is clear, engaging, and persuasive. Now, besides supermetrics, what other tools does Cody use to manage his business and streamline his workflow? He mentions several. Yeah. Including Keywords Everywhere for SEO SEMrush, for Keyword Research, Figma for design and Webflow for development. It sounds like he has a pretty diverse tech stack. He does, and he's always exploring new tools and technologies that can help him improve his processes and achieve better results. I'm particularly interested in his fascination with unstructured data. It seems like there's a lot of untapped potential there. He believes there's a gold mine of insights waiting to be unlocked from unstructured data sources like audio and video. Can you give an example? He uses the example of horse betting, where there's a ton of valuable information buried in past race streams. Think about all the data points, the horse's performance history, the jockeys, the track conditions, even the commentary. It's all there, but it's not neatly organized in a spreadsheet. It's raw, unstructured data. Exactly. And Cody believes that the next wave of billion dollar companies will emerge from those who can effectively extract and analyze this kind of unstructured data. That's a bold prediction, but it makes you think about all the hidden insights that are just waiting to be discovered. It does, and it speaks to Cody's forward thinking approach, always looking ahead to what's next. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah. what are some of the key takeaways we can glean from Cody's journey? What can our listener learn from his experience? I think Cody's story highlights the power of data-driven decision-making, but also the importance of balancing that with intuition mm -hmm. and a willingness to experiment. Yeah. He's not afraid to take risks, learn from his mistakes, and adapt quickly to the ever-changing digital landscape. He's a great example of how entrepreneurship is a constant process of learning and evolution. It's not about having all the answers, but about being resourceful adaptable and persistent absolutely and his emphasis on distribution is a crucial reminder that even the best product won't succeed without a solid strategy for getting it in front of the right people it's been a fascinating journey exploring cody's insights and strategies i think our listener has a lot to consider and apply to their own ventures i agree if you're inspired by cody's story and want to learn more be sure to check out his content on twitter linkedin and youtube you'll find a wealth of valuable information and practical advice and remember his final message, which echoes throughout everything he does. Just start. Don't let fear or perfectionism hold you back. Take action today, even if it's just a small step. The best way to learn is by doing experiment, iterate, and never stop learning. That's a great note to end on. If you're enjoying these deep dives, make sure to subscribe to AA News In Depth for more insightful analysis. Right. We'll see you on the next one.